Well, the 12 days of Christmas, most of us have heard the song, but what's behind the story, the story behind those lyrics? Well, author Ace Collins has the answer. Most people think the 12 days of Christmas song is just for fun and games, but there's actually a lot more to it. If you sing it and know what's behind it, it is really a serious song because back when the Catholic Church was outlawed in England, the Catholics went underground teaching their theology and their dogma and their doctrine to their children. One of the ways was through songs. So the English people were singing this song without knowing what it meant. The Catholic children knew what it meant. And so each one of those 12 days, and by the way, 12 days of Christmas starts on Christmas Eve and goes through the day of Epiphany. Each one of those 12 days was, were important points of faith. Milkmaids were said and put in that song because they were the lowest job in England, the lowest of the low. And Christ came not only for the kings, but also the low as well. Five golden rings, very interesting. The first five books of the Old Testament, the Torah. 10 lords a-leaping, 10 commandments, 11 pipers. 11 disciples who took the word out. There weren't 12, there were 11 because Judas didn't take the word out. My favorite is probably the partridge in the pear tree, the very first one, because the partridge is the only bird on the planet that will lay down its life for its nest. Who laid down his life for us? Christ. The partridge represents Christ. Well, now let's take a look at another Christmas tradition, spelling the name of the holiday X-M-A-S. Some people assume that's a way of taking Christ out of the word Christmas. In fact, the opposite is true, and here's why. Occasionally around Christmas, you see it abbreviated as Xmas. Are we abbreviating? Are we going back to an older tradition? What, what's the story behind that? A lot of people get upset when they see that. They think you're trying to take Christ out of mm -hmm. Christmas. Yet if Paul or Timothy came back, they would look at that as putting Christ into Christmas because mm -hmm. X is the first letter of Christ's name in Greek. And so they look at that as the way Christ was spelled. As a matter of fact, in the old days, when a Christian was martyred, people would go up on the street after that Christian was martyred and the body was taken off and draw an X on that spot to represent a Christian died here for his faith. For 1,500 years, the church wrote Christmas as X must really? worship Christ. Remember, most people couldn't read. X they could read, though, as Christ's name. Secondly, and this is really, I think, key and critical, paper and ink were in very short supply. So they abbreviated anything they could when they would write out text. And so this was like an early form of texting, early texting. X must. But believe it or not, it was not taking Christ out of Christmas. It was actually keeping Christ in Christmas. And we can use that as a worship and a witnessing tool today. We can tell people the history of Xmas and show them that it's actually putting Christ into Christmas. Ace Collins' book is called The Stories Behind the Great Traditions of Christmas, and it is available nationwide. Gord? It is wonderful to look at the traditions of Christmas and to celebrate them. Uh, with your family. So um, get these books, get, get information on how they, they arrived. How did we arrive at, at these wonderful traditions and celebrate them. And may you and your family have a very Merry Christmas. Well, let's join in as we leave you today with these words from Luke 2. Let's join in with the angels and what they said when Jesus was born. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace goodwill towards men. Understand that G Jesus came so that God could have goodwill towards you and me. And he's no longer angry at us. He no longer wants to punish us. He wants goodwill for men and women on earth. Let that be your Christmas message this year. God bless you. We'll see you again.